Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya so being here in this environment, surrounded with all these trees, I'm thinking about the pastime which took place in Vrindavan. What happened was the Yagnapatnis had come to Krishna. You remember the pastime? Yeah. The cowherd boys were hungry one morning. And they went to the brahmanas, to the yagnik brahmanas, to ask for food, and they just totally ignored them. Look how her boys come back and told Krishna, and Lord Krishna told them, go to their wives, go to the yagnapatnis. And when they went there, the yagnapatnis immediately came running with all the things which they had prepared for the yagya. And of course the yagnapadnis, they wanted to stay with Krishna. They didn't want to go back to their husbands. But Lord Krishna said, no, no, you have to go back. You have to go and stay with your husbands. And don't worry, your husbands will take you back. <laughs> Although they left their husbands to go to Krishna, they could go back. So just after that incident, Lord Krishna is praising the trees and he's talking about how magnanimous the trees are. He said, how magnanimous all these trees are because they're giving their mercy to everyone. So many birds are living in the trees, so many, not only birds, other animals, Creatures, they find their shelter, they find their home in the trees. And human beings also can take shelter if, it's, if there's rain or if the sun's too hot, we can go under the shade of the tree. And at the same time, the tree provides fuel, the wo wood for fire, and so many leaves also falling from the tree. The leaves are also useful for so many different purposes. The birds will take the leaves and make nests. And sometimes people will collect the leaves and sew them together, make plates to eat prasadam off of. So everything has its purpose. The farmers will collect the leaves, use them for fertilizer on the field. So the trees are very benevolent, very magnanimous. Lord Krishna was talking about the trees because he saw how the brahmanas, these brahmanas were not benevolent. They were not very compassionate or kind. They didn't want to even recognize the cowherd boys when they came there. They just ignored them. And of course, after their wives came back, the, the brahmanas were lamenting. They understood their bad fortune, their, how unfortunate they were, that they were not able to take advantage of the mercy of Lord Krishna. So the trees are glorified by Krishna. The brahmanas, <laughs> We're fallen souls, unfortunate souls. But the trees are very magnanimous, very benevolent. Lord Krishna also performs his pastimes under Kadamba trees. Kadamba tree is very special. Radha and Krishna are seated on a throne underneath Kadamba tree. And Lord Shiva he resides with Parvati under a tree. Of course, that's a banyan tree. Lord Shiva makes his home there under the banyan tree. Lord Shiva, at one point, he had built a house for himself. 
and his good wife Parvati. But in order to move into the house, they had to first do the griha pravesh. And so all the brahmanas came and they did the griha pravesh. And after they did griha pravesh, they said, now you have to give us some charity. But Lord Shiva said, well, I don't have anything. It's, I just have the house. So they began to take the house. <laughs> they took all the different bricks, the different gold and everything, which Lord Shiva had used for the house. And so I ended up, there was no house left. So Lord Shiva thought, no need to build another house. So he's happy. Although his wife is the controller of the material energy, they live under a tree. And they're happy there. The trees, the home for such great personalities. And Lord Chaitanya also tells us we should take the example of the tree for tolerance, that we're encouraged to be as tolerant as a tree. Just as the trees tolerate the heat and the cold and the wind and the rain, and they tolerate people coming and cutting their branches and taking away so many things from the tree, the leaves, the flowers, the fruits. People will come, take what they can get. But the tree tolerates. So Lord Chaitanya says, we should also be tolerant like the tree. Tolerance is an important quality of the Vaishnava. We lost a devotee when I was in Stockholm. Uh, the, just the day before, I, well, I spent the night in the Stockholm center where Tapas Prabhu is staying. And uh, just the day before, one of my god brothers, a person called Advaita Acharya Das, departed from the world. So he was, uh, he was from the UK. He joined very early, 1973, I think, he came to Krishna consciousness. Uh, so he was a very sweet devotee. And he had the habit to write poetry. He was poetic. So I was telling the devotees how in the Srimad Bhagavatam it describes how the four Kumaras were entering into Vaikuntha. And there's a big description about Vaikuntha there. It's in the third canto, chapter uh, 15, I think it is. So the four Kumaras are entering into Vaikuntha. And there's an extensive description about the nature of life in Vaikuntha. And Srila Prabhupada also comments about the qualification to enter into Vaikuntha. And he says, qualification is that you should have the good qualities. You have to have, like, there's 26 qualities of a Vaishnava. So, if you have these good qualities, it's a great asset to open the doors to Vaikuntha, if you're blessed with these qualities. So I was telling how I thought this devotee, Advaita Acharya Prabhu, that he had nice qualities, including poetic. And it's very helpful. I said it must have been very helpful for him for his next birth. If not, if he didn't go back to Godhead, then I'm sure he must have taken a very good birth in a Vaishnava family so that he could finish his season, his time in the material world before going back to Godhead. So in the spiritual world, there are many trees also. In Vaikuntha, there's many trees. And trees are also souls, they're also spirit souls. Here in the material world, these trees, well, Lord Krishna was saying, 
they're magnanimous. They're better than these brahmanas because they're giving so much to others. This is an, an important quality of devotees, that they want to give. They, as Srila Prabhupada often said when he was questioned, why have you come here, Swamiji? Have you just come to beg like the other Swamis who come here? You come to beg some money to go back to India to build your temple, to make your nice home there in India? And Srila Prabhupada, of course, told them that I have not come to beg from you. I have come to give you. I have come to give you what you have forgotten. So this is the mood of the pure devotees, that they want to give. We don't, we don't want to get from others, but we want to give what people need to understand their situation in this material world. So Lord Krishna was praising the trees. Although generally we consider the trees to be, you know, not very high consciousness, we would consider trees are more influenced by the mode of ig ignorance, tamagun, because the consciousness is so restricted. The roots are stuck in the ground and cannot move. It's like a punishment to be put into the body of a tree. And we saw Narada Muni how he cursed Nala, Kuvera and Mani Griva also, that they had to become Arjuna trees. Arjuna trees are very big and tall. I was appreciating how big the trees are here. They're very tall, some of the trees. Of course, the Kali Yuga, the trees are not really very big. When Muchi Kunda was woken up by Kalayavana and he burned Kalayavana to ashes, Muchi Kunda came out and he saw all the trees were so small, he understood, oh, Kali Yuga has begun. He thought, I don't want to get too involved in affairs in this Kali Yuga and he went off to do austerities in some remote place to finish up his time in the material world. So in Kali Yuga everything is diminished. Our size is also diminished, our heights are not very big. Kali Yuga, previous ages people were much taller. It is said Lord Balaram has another wife, one, well, Lord Balaram's wife, Revati. She was the daughter of Maharaj Revata. Maharaj Revata didn't know who to marry his daughter to. So he went to Brahma Loka to see Lord Brahma to ask his advice. But when he got to Brahma Loka, they told him, well, you have to wait. Lord Brahma's listening to a musical concert. When the concert's finished, then you can meet Lord Brahma. So I, I, they waited, he sat with his daughter and they waited for the concert to finish. And then Lord Brahma came and they said, now you can meet Lord Brahma. So Maharaj Revata explained why he'd come. He said, you know, I want to get my daughter married. I want a suitable husband. And I was thinking, I don't know, this king or that king. And he mentioned the names of various kings. And Lord Brahma laughed. He said, those kings, they've already gone long ago. They've already finished. They're already, their lifespan was already over long ago. And Maharaj Srivata was surprised. He said, no, I, I, was, I was just with them, I know that. But Lord Brahma said, but you've been here on Brahma Loka, and the time here on Brahma Loka, one moment is one year. You've been here some time waiting on me. Many generations have come and gone. Those kings you've mentioned, they've already long gone. And so Maharaj Srivata said, then what to do? What about my daughter? And Maharaj Srivata said, go back to earth, 
the personality of Godhead, Lord Balaram is there and he will make a good husband for your daughter. So that was, of course, very nice news. He thought, oh, the personality of Godhead, that I couldn't get a better husband for my daughter. So he came back to earth and presented his daughter to Lord Balaram. But there was a problem that she was from the previous yuga. She was from the Treta yuga. Lord Balaram was appearing in Dwapara yuga. So she was, you know, you know, she was a big woman, you know. So Lord Balaram took his plow and brought her down to a, a suitable side. And so this was Lord Balaram's wife, Rivata, Rivati. So trees are very wonderful, very important. Uh, one time we had a tree growing in the Dallas, in the courtyard of our temple in Dallas. And it was growing onto the building. It was, you know, affecting the building. And what happened, the devotees cut the tree. And when Prabhupada saw that we cut the tree, he was very upset. And he said, you will suffer. You have cut the tree. <laughs> so Prabhupada was very concerned about trees. And you, you, we also saw in Krishna Balaram Mandir, there was a tree growing in the courtyard there, and Prabhupada said, just leave it. And it grew, and it was very nice. It was a wonderful tree, it lived there for many years. In course of time, it's expired, and we put another tree in there now. But the trees are very important to us. We know that they're, they're also life. They also, they have a soul. They're living entities. And sometimes the great devotees can transform the trees. They can liberate the trees back to Godhead. So we have come here to chant the holy name. We hope these trees will also be benefited, right? That they can also get a better birth hearing the holy name. How to benefit the trees? The chanting of Hare Krishna is beneficial to all living entities. Lord Chaitanya asked Haridas Thakur how to benefit the living Haridas, the, the chanting of the holy name is the best thing for all living entities. So the trees provide so many wonderful examples for us. We're remembering these trees. We want to be careful we don't become trees in the future, right? This, <laughs> we want to go. Of course, in the spiritual world there are also trees, living entities who, these are souls in the spiritual world who desire to serve Krishna in that particular way. According to the devotion of the living entity, they take birth in different species of life, even in the spiritual world. And therefore, in the spiritual world, there's so much variety. The Mayavadis, uh, they think, that, or the impersonalists, they think there's only the Brahman. And they think of the spiritual world as just being light. And there's nothing more than light and no variety. But the devotees see things in a different way. We have information from our scriptures that there's so much variety there in the spiritual world. There's wonderful trees providing for the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna and the cowherd boys, they will enjoy sometimes climbing on the trees, sometimes eating the fruit. Of course, the trees in the spiritual world are kalpabriksha trees. They can produce anything the person desires, all different varieties of fruits regardless of the season. So, Kalpabriksha trees, <laughs> very 
very nice to have some kalpa breaksha trees and we could have nice fruits to offer all year round to Gornitai to please the deities. We have to make the best with what is provided for us here in this material world. So we are trying to encourage people to plant trees and grow nice, let trees grow, let them grow nice. They provide so much shelter and sh so much inspiration for people. The trees of Vrindavan, they're all very special souls. Just like the people in Vrindavan, not only the people in Vrindavan are special, Damvasis, the trees are also Damvasis. That they, have, they live in the Holy Land for a long time. Uddhava, when he went to Vrindavan and met with Lord Krishna, and, well, not with Krishna, but with all the gopis and Srimati Radharani, then Uddhava, after he had met them, he he thought to himself, if I can become a creeper or a tiny plant or grass in the holy dam, it will be very fortunate for me. And because then I can get the dust from the feet of these devotees. So similarly, these trees who live in the holy dam, they're so fortunate. Uh, we should be very careful, never to damage them, never to break any branches from them or anything, but to re respect them and to embrace them and get the touch of these living entities, the touch of the tree, embracing the trees can also, just, just like the touch of the pure devotees, it can purify us from this material existence. So remembering all these different pastimes, we offer our respects and try to understand all of these wonderful trees which are growing here, how they've witnessed so many activities, so many souls have come here and gone, and now the devotees have also come and brought the holy name. And sometimes you will see the trees, sometimes they're so pious, they will shed the leaves that in ecstasy, just like the living entities, their bodies stand on end and the hair standing on end, herpulations within the body. The trees also sometimes feel ecstasy and the leaves begin to fall from the trees in ecstasy, hearing the chanting of the holy name. So it's said even that the, the five Pandavas became five trees along the banks of Radha Kund. I've read in, uh, Navadvip, in Vrindavan Mahatmya describes like that, that the five Pandavas, that they also became trees. These are just some thoughts. <coughs> Anyone has any question or comment? So when is one allowed to cut trees? Or not? I mean, Robert didn't want us to cut trees, but then again... <coughs> are we allowed to cut trees? Yeah, or when or under what circumstances? Because all the Prophet writes in the... <coughs> Lots of, lot of the trees in the jungles are useless trees that just can be cut for wood and building houses and land can be cleared for, for cultivation. Yes, if you have a good reason. I was just in Radha Desh and in Radha Desh they have a big forest on their land also. But they told me the government came and they, had to, they told them to cut down 200 trees mm -hmm. because there was a disease which was growing through, which was spreading through the trees. 
and they told the devotees, if you don't cut down the trees, then all your trees will be affected and the whole forest will be cut down. So they said, you better cut down these 200 trees and it will stop the spreading of this disease. So that was one, one case. Of course, they, they make, use, make use of the wood. They're using it to make furniture. They're building, they're doing construction. And they make good use of the timber. They don't waste it. They save it and use it for construction work and for uh, building furniture and so on. So if you're using the wood for a good purpose, then may, it can be justified. And if the trees are diseased also. Well, I can... Our farm community up in Sweden, Almig also there, they, I mean, the whole place is heated by wood from the old forest also. Yes, so. right. Yeah, for, for the heating, yes, the, that's right. Okay. Well, the same there in Radhadesh, they also use the wood for the heating, mm. yeah, mm. quite. So that's a good use, make, making use of the wood to heat the temple for Krishna. So that's also allowed, you can do like that. Mm. Maros, I heard you speaking about these five trees on the banks of um, Radakun. But I heard that four of them on Paris, one upon this one, that was a one. Is that true or did you hear something about that? I don't know. Uh, I haven't heard. Maybe. Anybody know? When you spoke about prominent trees, I remembered the uh, tree at the Kalia mm. Ghat. Kalia Ghat tree. Mm -hmm. Krishna, what jump? Maybe you can tell a couple of words about this tree. Kalia Ghat. Krishna jumped from the tree and into still, the. He's huh? there, and he's still there, yeah? The yeah. tree. I mean. Uh, is it still there? Yeah. The son of that original tree, or some relatives. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think the story was that uh, the Garuda, he... Ted dropped some nectar. Dropped yeah. some nectar, oh. some there, and then this tree is still growing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 5,000 years, mm -hmm. this tree is still growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have tree also there, Lord Chaitanya's birthplace at the Yoga Pit, the name tree. At the Samadhi of Chankasi also, there's a Champak tree mm. and a name tree. Champak is the nickname of Chankasi. <laughs> and the name tree, of course, represents Nimai. So the two trees grow together. And the one, and very big, very huge tree. Been that they say it's from time of the Chankazi. After his samadhi, they planted the tree, and it's grown and grown. Very big tree. That's a baku. Yeah, the Siddha baku. Yeah. And. Uh, there's a tree also at uh, Saranga Murari's place, Mamagachi. At Mamagachi, there's a special tree. He said Lord Chaitanya took some pen and planted it in the ground, and from that this tree came out. And nobody knows what type of tree this is. That there's nobody ever found out any other tree like this tree that came from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm. Is this true that, I mean, simple trees is a, in, they've been in a previous life, like prostitute? Well, we know that, that Narada Muni put the two sons of Kavera into the body of trees. He th considered it to be the, a punishment for them. Mm. So and we often also say that, that in the body of trees, that it's souls being punished that they're put into that kind of mm -hmm. condition as a punishment for certain activities. 
but some, sometimes often happens that when people are punished, then they become repentant and they feel guilty and they change and they become, you know, a different person. And sometimes punishing people helps them. So similarly, you get trees which are often pious and very magnanimous and they're giving so much to others. So, maybe they were sinful at one point, but they can change and become pious. Maharaj, we, we were uh, reading with Greg, and Srila Prabhupada was speaking about slaughtering animals. And there Srila Prabhupada said that if an animal doesn't live its lifespan, whole lifespan, and been killed, they need to again come back to the same species to finish the cycle. Is it applicable to like trees and... Yes, it can also be like that. It, you know, if, if we killing the trees, chopping the trees, then it, 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 that soul has to take birth again. In the, in the, the tree body? Yeah, into some suitable body, some whatever body, maybe back in the tree body again to finish that time in the tree body. But especially in the animals, like the, the, the cow, for example, the cow is the most sacred of animals because it's so close to the human form of life. And the, the understanding is that the soul from the cow will take birth in the human form of life, in the next birth, that it will take a good birth. But if they're killed before they're actual, meant before, if they're, if they're slaughtered, then they have to come back again and finish that time. So that's very sinful. Now there's barely any cow live its whole life, but... Well, we're trying to change that by our preaching and by our own example. We're also taking care of cows, we're teaching people also how to take care of cows. I mean, of course the cows are going to die, we are all going to die one day. Why can't they just wait for the cow to die naturally? They don't live such a long life. If you just wait for them to die, once they they die naturally, then you can take them and eat them if they want. If that's what they want. They're so eager to eat the flesh, so wait till the cow dies naturally. You no need to slaughter it. So that's very sinful, and, and that brings on so many reactions on the planet. We get wars, so many wars going on in the world today because of all this cow killing, this business is going on. These are reactions for all of our sinful activities. If we will learn to live in harmony with God's laws, then we, we wouldn't have all of these problems in the world. Maharaj, you, you also mentioned um, uh, that uh, wives of a brahmanas, they came to Krishna and he sent them back. Uh, as I know that uh, Krishna told them the same, almost the same shloka that he told to the gopis in Bhagavatam. So, uh, but gopis didn't, didn't went back, they stayed, but brahmana wives, they stayed. Well, gopis stayed to dance Rasa Leela. They stayed for the Rasa dance, and then, then they went back. <laughs> not, not like they never went back, but they, they, but they stayed the night to dance Rasa Lila, and then they went. But the the wives of the Brahmanas, they went back. So what is the difference between these two groups? Why Gopis was more determined? And what is the difference between the Bhakti of those two? Well, it was up to Krishna, right? Lord Krishna decided that, you know, these ladies were there, they were married ladies, they were the wives of the brahmanas, they had some duty there, they had some responsibility, so he sent them back. That their husbands 
also were, were, were there and they were supposed to help their husbands. So it wasn't quite appropriate for them to just leave everything and just be with Krishna. Lord Krishna was a cowherd boy. Maybe Lord Krishna knew he's not going to stay in Vrindavan for very much longer. Not long after that he left Vrindavan and went to Mathura. So he didn't want the wives of the brahmanas with him all the time. Mm. Wow. <laughs> That's one possibility. But uh, also they they're older. I mean they they they're like mothers to Yeah, Krishna. they were like old they were married ladies or yeah. older ladies. So but still they were worshipping Lord Krishna. Yeah. They wanted to serve him. They wanted to be with them. They wanted to take shelter of him. They were very great devotees, and they're considered prema bhaktas because they immediately came, sacrificed everything to come and serve Krishna. So they they were considered very very great devotees. They, they were ready to give up everything, give up their husbands, their families and everything for Lord Krishna. But Lord Krishna said, no, it's, it's okay, go home. So that, that led to Lord Krishna talking about the trees, how they were so magnanimous because he was thinking how the brahmanas are so different. <laughs> they're, they're callous, cold-hearted. Of course, they were they were just doing some karmakandi yagya. They were karmakandi brahmanas. Most of the brahmanas today are karmakandi brahmanas. They do rituals for material benefit. So they were engaged in that kind of thing. 